Dr. Sage here. As we continue our discussion about organelles, the next topic we're going to talk about is the endomembrane system. Now, of note, the endomembrane system is not one organelle. It's a system of organelles that work together, kind of similar to your cardiovascular system. Your cardiovascular system is not one organ, like it's not just your heart, for example. It's a system of organs that work together, kind of like your heart and your lungs. Okay, so the endomembrane system is made up of the nuclear envelope that we've already discussed, the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles, and the plasma membrane. And we're going to go through those one by one. Now, before we discuss each of the different parts of the endomembrane system, something to note about the endomembrane system is that all these different parts of the endomembrane system are connected together because they're either physically attached to each other. For example, the nuclear envelope and the ER are physically attached to each other, or they're connected via transfer vesicles. For example, as a preview, we're gonna learn in a few minutes, the rough ER is gonna be building proteins. They're gonna put those proteins into a transport vesicle and send that vesicle to the next part, the Golgi apparatus. Okay, so all these parts of the endomembrane system are physically connected with each other. Now, the first part of the endomembrane system we're going to discuss is the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short. Now, the ER accounts for more than half of the membranes inside your cells. In other words, you have a lot of ER inside your cells. The ER membrane is continuous with the nuclear envelope. What that means is the nuclear envelope, the membrane around the nucleus, it continues on be, to become the ER. So they're physically attached to each other. Now, there are two types of ER, rough ER and smooth ER. Now, rough ER is called rough ER because if you look at it, it looks rough. Okay, why? Because there's all these little red dots on it. Those are ribosomes. So there's a bunch of ribosomes stuck on the rough ER. And if you look in the electron microscope image of the rough ER, so these little flatten sacs here, that's a rough ER. All these little black dots on the that, those are ribosomes. Okay, so that's why it's called rough ER, because it looks rough. It has my ribosomes attached to it. The other type of ER is called smooth ER. The reason it's called smooth is because it looks smooth. Why? Because it does not have ribosomes attached to it. Now, when you look at the rough ER, it looks like flattened sacs, like if you take a bag and flatten it. Okay, that's what it looks like, like these flattened sacs here. Okay, that's what the rough ER looks like. In contrast, the smooth ER does not look like flattened sacs. It's more tubular shaped, so it looks like more like tubes, like you can see here. All I've told you so far about the ER is its structure. What does it look like? I have not yet told you what the purpose of the ER is, like what the ER is doing for the cell. And it turns out that the rough ER and the smooth ER have different jobs they perform for the cell. So, for example, the smooth ER, okay, what it does for the cell is it synthesizes or it makes lipids, it metabolizes or breaks down carbohydrates, uh, it stores calcium ions, we're not going to focus on that one for this course, and it detoxifies drugs and poisons. In other words, if your cell is exposed to a drug or poison, if it has the ability to get rid of that drug or poison, your smooth ER is what does that. Okay, so those are the functions of the smooth ER. The rough ER does different jobs. Remember, rough ER is called rough ER because it has ribosomes attached to it. Recall what ribosomes do? Ribosomes build proteins. So what the rough ER is gonna be doing is it's gonna be building proteins. It's gonna be building a particular type of protein called a glycoprotein. Okay, a glycoprotein is a protein with a carbohydrate attached to it. So remember when we learned about the carbohydrates, glucose, glycogen, those are carbohydrates, so a glycoprotein is a protein with a carbohydrate attached to it. The rough ER builds the proteins, then it's going to take those proteins and it's going to wrap a membrane around them to send them to the next place they need to go. Okay, so that's called a transport vesicle because it's going to be transporting those proteins to a different place. The rough ER is also the membrane factory for the cell, so it makes a lot of membrane that's going to be used inside the cell. So those are the functions of the ER. 
Now of note, I just said the rough ER is making proteins, putting a vesicle on and sending it to the next place it needs to go. The next place it needs to go is called the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is made up of flattened membrane sacs called cisterna. Okay, so it looks like this here. Okay, these flattened sacs. And the purpose of the Golgi is to modify products of the ER. Now, what does that mean? What that means is the ER is building proteins. But a lot of proteins, when they're first made, they're not actually ready to be used. You have to do something to them. Like, for example, let's say turn them on, switch those proteins on. So you're going to chemically modify the proteins. Now, the details of how that happens, we're not going to cover that right now. But uh, Golgi is going to do that. The other thing the Golgi is going to do is it's going to sort and package those proteins into transport vesicles based on where they need to go. Now what that means is the rough ER is building proteins. It's sending proteins to the Golgi. Golgi is modifying them. But most of those proteins, their function, their purpose is not to be inside the Golgi. They're going to go somewhere else, like they might go to the nucleus or they might go to the plasma membrane if it's protein that's supposed to be leaving the cell. So what the Golgi is going to do is it's going to sort those proteins based on where they need to go and then send them wherever they need to go. So the Golgi is, is kind of the post office for the cell. Okay, like where you're living, you have a post office and it gets a bunch of mail. So that mail needs to go to Orlando, Florida. And some of that mail needs to go to New York City. What the post office is going to do is it's going to take all the mail that needs to go to Orlando, Florida, put it in a pile, and then put it in a truck and send it to Orlando, Florida. All the mail that needs to go to New York, put it in a different pile and send it in a different truck to New York. Okay. So what the post office is doing is it's sorting the mail based on where it needs to go and then sending it where it needs to go. The Golgi is doing the same thing. It's taking all the proteins that need to go to the nucleus, putting them in a pile, and then sending them in a transport vesicle to the nucleus. All the proteins that need to go to the plasma membrane, putting in the pile, and then sending them in a transport vesicle to the plasma membrane. So the Golgi is kind of like the post office for the cell. Uh, the Golgi, as you can see in this figure here, what's going to happen is the rough ER is going to be building proteins. Then it's going to take those proteins and put them into a transport vesicle and that's coming from the rough ER, and that transport vesicle is gonna to go to the Golgi apparatus. Those proteins are gonna move through the Golgi apparatus, and then when they get to the other side, after they've been modified and sorted, they're gonna be put into another transport vesicle and then sent wherever they need to go, for example, the plasma membrane, if it's a protein that's supposed to be leaving the cell. So what this also means is the Golgi has two different sides. One side of the Golgi is facing the rough ER, the other side of the Golgi is facing the plasma membrane. Okay, so of course there's names for them. The side facing the rough ER, that's called the cis face. The side facing the plasma membrane, that's called the trans face. So the proteins move from cis to not listed here, medial, that means the middle, to trans, and then sent wherever they need to go. Okay, so that's what actually happens to the proteins. So let's say you have a protein that needs to be secreted from the cell, it needs to leave the cell. If a protein is going to be secreted from the cell, it's going to be built in the rough ER. So it's going to be built in the rough ER, from there it's going to go to a transport vesicle, from there it's going to go to the Golgi apparatus, from there after it passes through the Golgi apparatus, it's going to go into another transport vesicle, and then it's going to go to the plasma membrane, because this is a protein that's supposed to be leaving the cell. Okay, so that's like the pathway for a protein that's going to end up leaving the cell. The Golgi also does something else. The Golgi also makes lysosomes. Okay, so what is a lysosome? The lysosome is basically the stomach for the cell. So the lysosome is a little membrane sphere that inside it, it contains hydrolytic or digestive enzymes. What that means is it can break apart other macromolecules. So it can take proteins and break it down into like amino acids. Take fat molecules, break them apart. Take polysaccharides, break them down into monosaccharides. Take nucleic acids, break them down into nucleotides. So it's breaking apart or digesting these other things. So what the lysosome is really doing is it's digesting or it's eating, breaking apart the food, just like your stomach. Your stomach, you take in food and then you break it apart. The lysosome is taking in these large molecules and breaking them apart. Okay, so for example, it can actually be used like a stomach. 
your cells need to eat just like you need to eat. So let's say outside the cell there is a piece of food, a big chunk of food. What the cell is going to do is it's going to take its plasma membrane and start to wrap it around that piece of food. And it keeps wrapping around that piece of food until it brings that food inside the cell. This is a process called phagocytosis, which we're going to learn about in the next chapter. Okay, that creates a food vacuole, also called a phagosome. Then the Golgi apparatus makes a lysosome. The lysosome contains digestive or hydrolytic enzymes. So what that means is you have the food vacuole that has the food inside it. You have the lysosome that has the digestive enzymes inside it. So what happens is the two fuse together. Now you have the digestive enzymes with the food. So the digestive enzymes break apart that food and then release it to the cell for the cell to eat that food. Okay, so that's one purpose of a lysosome. But the lysosome, which remembers me with the Golgi apparatus, also does something else. There are times where there will be parts of your cell that are not functioning, like they're broken down. And what happens is your cell wants to get rid of them. It doesn't want to leave these broken down pieces inside your cell because it can cause problems. Like there might be a time where one of your mitochondria is broken down. It's not working right. So you want to get rid of that broken down mitochondria. What the cell does is it takes a lysosome that has digestive enzymes and that lysosome it fuses with the cell's own mitochondria. So now those digestive enzymes are with the mitochondria so it can break apart that mitochondria. So what the cell is doing is it's eating itself. Okay, and this is called autophagy, which literally means self-eating. Okay, it's not eating itself because it's hungry. It's eating itself because it wants to get rid of that broken piece. So that's something else that a lysosome can do. All right, also part of the endomembrane system are vacuoles, okay, and they can be made by the ER or by the Golgi apparatus. There's different types of vacuoles. One type is called a food vacuole, which I already briefly mentioned. That's made by the process of uh, phagocytosis. Another type of vacuole is called a contractile vacuole, which is basically a membrane sphere which does what it sounds like it does. It can physically contract, okay, and as it contracts, as it squeezes, that can be used to do things like expel water from certain types of cells. The other vacuole we're going to talk about, the one we're going to focus on right now, is called the large central vacuole. The large central vacuole is one of the things that distinguishes a plant cell from an animal cell. A plant cell has a large central vacuole, an animal cell does not have a large central vacuole. Okay, so here is an example of a plant cell. So the plant cell has things inside it, like the nucleus we already talked about. Okay, it has the Golgi apparatus, and then it has this thing here that looks like a bunch of big empty space. Okay. That big empty space, or what looks like big empty space, is the large central vacuole. It's basically filled up with water. Okay, And the plant has a large central vacuole, animal cells do not. Another difference between plants and animals is plants have outside their cells a cell wall, which is a stiff, rigid structure that surrounds that plant cell. Okay, so what happens is the plant cell takes in water, and the water goes to the large central vacuole. And the large central vacuole starts to swell up with water. And as it's swelling up with water, what it does is it takes the rest of the plant cell and it pushes it hard against the plant cell wall. In other words, that actually creates pressure inside the plant cell. Okay, that's called turgor pressure. It's basically a type of water pressure. Okay, and that creates the pressure inside a plant cell. Now plants use this, this turgor pressure, based on the large central vacuole, to help the plant. Um, and in fact, you've seen the results of a large central vacuole. So let's say you have a plant at home, and it's a green stem plant, so not like a wooden stem plant, it's a green stem plant. But you're a bad plant parent. So you stop watering your plant. What happens to that plant starts to wilt, okay? Now, you're a bad plant parent, but you're not a horrible one, because before the plant dies, what do you do? You start watering it again, and the plant that was wilted, what does it do? It goes back to being upright. Okay, so what's happening is when you're not watering that plant, that large central vacuole that's supposed to be filled up with water is losing its water, okay? And because of that, um, it's losing that pressure, trigger pressure, the water pressure is inside the plant cell, because everything is pulling away from the plant cell wall. Now, before the plant dies, start to water it again, so water starts to re-enter that large central vacuole, starts to swell back up, and again, push the rest of the plant cell hard against that plant cell wall, creating turgor pressure so the plant can be back upright. 
Okay, so you've seen the results of the large centrifugal, either being filled up with water or not filled up with water. In brief summary, the endomembrane system is made up of the nuclear envelope. Continuous with the nuclear envelope is the endoplasmic reticulum, two types. Rough ER looks like flattened sacs, and it looks rough because it has ribosomes stuck on it. The purpose of rough ER is to make glycoproteins. Smooth ER is tubular shaped. It does things like detoxify drugs and poisons. The Golgi apparatus receives transport vesicles from the rough ER. So the rough ER is making proteins, sending them to the Golgi. Golgi is modifying those proteins, sorting them based on where they need to go, and then sending them wherever they need to go. For example, to the plasma membrane if its proteins are supposed to be leaving the cell. The Golgi apparatus also makes the lysosome, which contains digestive or hydrolytic enzymes. It's like the stomach for the cell. So that was the endomembrane system, okay, which is a group of organelles that are working together inside your cells. Okay, now the next organelles we're going to talk about are the mitochondria and the chloroplast, and they're going to come in the next video lecture. So until then, this has been Dr. Sage.